If I were a ship who set my course, who'd be my captain? Who'd be the sport? Could I take the glory? Could I take the blame? Could I be the fuel? Uh, I'm John Davidson. Uh, I um, have had a, a very wholesome, a very, a very clean and clean-cut career. But all the time, I've been struggling with religion all through my career. Uh, I'm an atheist. I'm an atheist. I'm against theism, which is what I think atheism means. Uh, I do not believe in the boogeyman. You can be moral without having a boogeyman, and. Uh, I would like to uh, spread that word that free thought is better than, and being able to think things through is better for self-discovery and religion stops free thought. I joined Openly Secular a couple of years back and uh, I found a lot of people that agree with the way I feel. So I'm glad to be here at the Reason Rally. I'm very nervous. What do you say to 30,000 very smart people and I have to follow Bill Nye. So, <laughs> so who can, oh my God. I, I, the, oh, here's the opening to my speech. I'm so nervous about it. So I thought, and ladies and gentlemen, here's John Davidson. I'm gonna say, you know, there's lots of discussion about when life begins. Some people say life begins at conception. Some people say life begins at the first trimester, second trimester, whatever. Some people say life begins at birth. This, this debate will probably never have a clear-cut answer. But everyone agrees when life ends. Everyone knows that life ends when the brain stops functioning. When does this happen? It happens to me every time I have to follow Bill Nye at a Reason Rally speaking to 30,000 very smart people. <laughs> And then I go into my talk about being a preacher's kid and, uh, oh, I've studied religion a lot. Uh, but it happened in college. I, I took a course in comparative religion and logic because I was going to be a philosophy major. I don't know what I was going to do with it. Fortunately, I found theater arts and went into the theater. And became an actor. But uh, so uh, it's been a struggle. But... Uh, I'm, I'll be 75 in December. Oh my gosh. That's almost half a century. I had trouble with math, too. Uh, that's why I'm better at theater arts. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm old now, and, and uh, oh my goodness. I'm glad I figured this out before, before it's over. Uh, now, as an old guy? As an old guy. Are you afraid of death? Uh, the, I, I, I'm not afraid of, of death. You, I mean, death is a part of life. Dying is a part of life. Perhaps the greatest adventure of life is how you die. But we do die, and, and uh, that's it. And, and, and we don't go anywhere. We just, life stops. And the way you live beyond death is in the memories of people that loved you. That's how you live. That's how my father lives, my mother, and and people that I love. And when people stop loving you, I guess then you're really dead. So, so be nice to people. <laughs> that's, my, that's my philosophy. I think I've been hiding. I, I, uh, I, when I had my theater in Branson, Missouri, uh, I, that's the Bible Belt. I call it the Bible Rust Belt. And uh, I, they wanted me to close my show. This part I'm going to bring in my speech. And, and I... They wanted me to close my show with either, either God Bless America or a gospel song. And I made up some excuse about, well, I'm not a quartet. You know, you need to sing gospel yet before people. And then I really, I don't think I, think I said I didn't know God Bless America. Or and, but the truth was, I just, I was secular. And I just, and, and I said to my mother, who's a Baptist minister's wife, I said, you know, I, I'm just... Uh, I'm there in Branson, but I'm not going to do this. I just don't. It's phony. And she said, just don't say anything. Just why, why say anything? Why, why upset people? You know, why rock the boat? Just be silent. That's what I've been all my life. 
and I'm so glad to be around people like at the Reason Rally and with Openly Secular that are saying, no, we shouldn't be afraid of saying, this is, this is baloney. You know, uh, I was a good, I went to Baptist Youth Fellowship and I was, oh, I've studied the Bible a lot. And, and, and the Bible says amazing things. And then it says some really ugly, awful things. And I don't mean to get into Bible bashing, you know, because openly sec secular is not about that, as you know. It's about just saying, look, um, I'm an atheist and I'm proud of it and I don't want to lose my job because of it. And uh, I don't want you to tell me that I can't be a good patriot. I mean, the, the older Bush, what's the, which is, uh, who was the first Bush? George H.W. H.W., yeah. George H.W. Uh, actually said that you can't be a good patriot and be, uh, the, uh, and, and, and be an atheist. That, that you, you can't be moral without the fear of God. Well, isn't that terrible? Yes, religion is good for controlling the masses. It was used for that. The holy man in, in primitive time, all through history, the holy man has been able to control people and, and, and manipulate people because of voodoo. Where does morality come for you if you don't have orders from God? Uh, well, co morality comes from common sense. Uh, let's take it from the Bible. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. That's fine. A lot of, some good, a lot of good things in the Bible, good ideas. But you don't need a supreme being for that. It's just, it's you, what you give out, you get back. It's so simple and uh, so what was it like um, with your parents did you did you when did you first tell them that well, you didn't believe uh, these things uh, in college I came home and I said dad you know you're you're preaching you're saying that a man can walk on water and that and that a virgin can have a baby and you're saying that a, that a man can die I mean be dead and and after three days come back to life I mean, really, uh, not just an idea come back to life, but th the Bible says this was a man in your presence, you know, a real thing. And my dad uh, was a very liberal Baptist because he said, don't get involved with the dogma. He said, well, so? I mean, you know, just think what Jesus said. Well, wh what does the Bible say? It, it says a lot of terrible things about the position of women. It says women are secondary and women must submit to their man. And It says that slavery is okay, teaches you how to be a good slave. And if people disagree with you, you must stone them to death. Deuteronomy 13. You must stone people if they disagree. Kill them. Really? Uh, so, but my dad would say, don't, don't worry about that. Well, no, we should worry about that. We should stand up and say, this, uh, maybe it worked, uh, maybe it still works for some people, but with just a little bit of, of uh, research and discovery and science and the empirical method of reasoning, you can say this is true and that's hogwash. So. Now, did it bother them that uh, you had left Christianity? Did they fear for your soul or things like that or try to bring you back? No, my folks were, were uh, my dad had his doctorate in philosophy, and so he was not, he was not an uneducated man. And so he, he really had a very uh, um, worldly view of religion. And he was not about, you, you couldn't pin him down. He just said, I, I, I love with what Sam Harris says, which is, and maybe you got this from Christopher uh, Hitchens, that you can't be a moderate Jew or a moderate Christian if you if you are you are you can't you can't you you uh, they're, they're, either you are or you aren't and so and so I I I I, um, I wish my dad had had the the guts to, to say no this 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 is not uh, this is not real I, I guess what openly secular would say is that, that we're not trying to beat up on the Bible we're not even trying to beat up on Christians. What we're trying to say, I guess, you know, although a lot of us would like to go farther, further, we're trying to say just that it's okay if you have these doubts and things, it's okay to be uh, an atheist. It's okay. 
When I first said, there is no God and, and uh, you, you do not exist, or, or <laughs> who said that would be like talking to God. But I, when I really said that, I was afraid that, a, that lightning would strike me and that I, really that something physical would happen to me, that I would get up, you know, something. It's, because it's so, it was so indoctrinated in me as a preacher's kid. Um, so I, I think that's what the reason Valley accomplishes, is just, just for people to see uh, nice people um, who are saying, no, voodoo is primitive, primitive superstition. And we're beyond that. I've had several people I've interviewed who have said uh, that uh, if they were ordered to kill their own child, like Ab like Abraham was uh, for Isaac or Joshua, mm. and you know with the uh, Amalekites yeah. and all that, that they would follow those orders. Um, I've had about 50 people say that to me now um, on camera. And um, so I'll ask you if God did appear to you now and prove that He did exist, and He ordered you to kill your own child, would you would you follow that order? Uh, no, no. But he's God. Uh, but but, but I, I would reason it through. What, that if you're God and you're loving, you're, you're telling me to to kill somebody. You know, that's just you know the Crusades. They were killing in the name of God. It's just you know that's wrong. You see, I have it in my family. I, I have two daughters, and one of my daughters is a Christian. And very devout, and her husband is. And I said, we, we, we just can't talk about religion. And what a same, it can split families. In half. <clears throat> and the latest thing is I said to her, you know, homosexual relationships, we've, we've found, we've all grown, we've all realized that, that attractions between any two human beings is so normal. I mean, and I've looked back through my life, and I think the gay movement has shown me this, you can be attracted to people of your own sex. It, I, all, all through my life I have. Um, and I've, I've spent 43 years of my life being married to women. I'm crazy about the female body. But I'm also attracted to men. And it's so normal. And she said, well, the Bible says that that's a sin. And I said, and, and the Bible says so many other ridiculous things. So you, there comes a point where you can't even talk about it. it. That just stops discussion. So where's the discovery? If your child says, Daddy, why is the sky blue? You say, well, because God made it that way. End of discussion. What a shame. Because the incredible thing is science. That Why is it actually blue? Well, the refraction from the... And the rain is a fascinating thing that we don't understand totally. But to say that it's God stops all discussion. I don't want to stop discussion. I want to keep learning and, and, and trying to find stuff until I die, which is coming very soon now at 75. Ah! I'm going to be 75. Since I've joined Openly Secular, I've called other celebrities and because I thought, you know, what, let's reach out, let's do this. Um, I don't think I should mention names on no. the thing, do I? No. It's up to them. Yeah. But yeah, people that I've worked with um, on television shows, people, stars that you would know, and they've said to me, I can't, do you know what would happen to my business if I did that? They're in business now. They were, I mean, I, I couldn't work. He said, of course you're right. Of course. Everybody knows that. But you can't say that in so many circles. You'll lose your job. You'll lose your business. And then other people that said, no, there's something there. I had a celebrity that, that you would all know that, that he and his wife, they, uh, they found a dog by the road that had been hit by a car. They took the dog to the vet. And the vet said, there's no way this, this, this dog is going to die. There's, there's just no way. So he and his wife put their hands on the dog for two or three hours. And the dog, you know, just barely making it through. And after three hours, and they, and they prayed, they prayed to some god. And after three hours, the dog began to revive. And he told me this story. And he said, so how could I not believe? <laughs> this anecdotal evidence like that, 
is not science, and, and uh, it's... Uh, well, usually what I do in those situations, friends have told me similar sorts mm -hmm. of things, they prayed and something happened. Yeah. Yeah. I usually look at the newspaper and see what happened that same day. Now, one, one friend had told me this when Sandy Hook happened. And they said, so you're telling me that God decided to, she believed that God had saved a friend from getting a broken arm by, by intercession and warning, you know, through a vision and dream. And uh, I said, so you're telling me that God could have done, warned about Sandy Hook, but he decided to save your friends having a broken arm instead? If I did that to you, how would you feel? Would you think I was a moral person? That I let those kids all die and uh, right. decided to save your broken arm? So. But now when you get real logical like that with religious people, my experience has been that they will say, well, we don't always know God's ways, right. you know. We're mere mortals. We can't always understand what the supreme being is thinking, but we have to follow it. So then how do you, that's like arguing with fog. Or, God or, gets credit for all the good things, none of the bad things. Yeah. I, I, I love football, but I love watching football. But when the guy goes into the end zone after a touchdown, he says, you know, like that. On the next play when he fumbles, what, why doesn't he say "fuck you"? Well, what, what did you What did you do? It's bullshit. Yeah. You can't. So, I wrote a song called "I Am a Ship." I, I, if I were a ship, um, I wrote this on a cruise ship. Um, I couldn't sleep. It was three a.m. I was. My mind was running through my life. The ship was gently rocking as I lay beside my wife. Something like a wake-up call was pounding in my brain. I dressed and left our cabin. The upper deck was washed with rain. With stars above to guide me, I was bound to some new shore. Up there between the sky and sea, my thoughts began to pour. If I were a ship, who'd set my course? Who'd be my captain? Who'd be the force? Did I take the glory? Did I take the blame? Did I be the fuel? Could I be the flame? If I were a ship Who'd set my course Who'd be my captain Who'd be the force? Well, I've heard so many voices Now the ocean has drowned them out One voice inside keeps saying I know what this life's all about. If I could follow my own passion, I know I could be something more. Take my own path to adventure, true to myself, true to the core. Yes, I am a ship. I set my course. I am a captain. I am a force. And I'll take the glory, and I'll take the blame, and I'll be the fuel, and I'll be the flame, because I am the ship, I set my course, I am the captain, I am a force. Right. Something great. like that, yeah. That was great. In other words, take responsibility for your for your for your actions. <laughs> What's wrong for the running back to to say, yeah, I did great that time, instead of saying, well, it's not me, it's this boogeyman. Yeah, that's the hard thing to do, though, because then it's all on you. Yes, it's all on you. No forgiveness. Except for the person from the person. Well, then you have then personal forgiveness. So you have to. 
You know, you have to forgive yourself for the stupid things that we all do. I've done so many stupid things in my life, but I don't need to confess it to a priest. I mean, you just have to learn to forgive yourself. Now, you were very famous on Hollywood Squares for being somebody who could convince so convincingly <laughs> people of the most outlandish, crazy things, and yet you would talk them into it. Yeah. It sounds like you might have had a very good career as a preacher. Well, I was a pre-theo in college. That's why I became a philosophy major. I wanted to be like my dad. Because I thought, gee, you know, here's my dad up there on stage. Everybody loves him. It's a, it's a position of respect. It's hard, you know, once you've been in the ministry, that glory, boy, it would be very hard to say, no, I'll just, no, and give that up. So you thought that's what you were going to go into? I thought I wanted to be a minister. And so, yeah, I could... Uh, I mean, it's a great position to be in. That's why it's so hard to get rid of it, because all these religions... When you say, oh, God bless you, God bless you, and all that, it, it, it makes people like you, and, and you seem... Uh, people... It, it's very... It's attractive. Sometimes it's not as, as pretty to say, no, I'm an atheist, I, yeah. So... What techniques did you use when you were on Hollywood Squares to get people... How do you get people to believe something that seems so, you know, out there, and yet yeah. you were able to do that. Would you have a particular well, it, you're, you're an actor. There's a lot of the ministry is acting. You know, you're, you really believe it. It's, uh, method acting means that you conjure up things, like if, you're, if, if in the play your father's dying, you conjure up when, you're, when your dog died or your horse and how that really got to you, it made you cry. So you use that. You can fool yourself. It's all pretending. And that's what, that's what religious people do. Marjo, remember the film Marjo? He was this, uh, in a gospel, in a gospel tent. And Marjo is all about this guy finally saying, no, I just couldn't do it anymore. People were coming up to me to be healed from all these diseases and things. And some would actually be healed because positive thinking, positive thinking the is, placebo a, effect. is a placebo effect and it is a healing effect. That's right. When you're negative all the time, they, I think science, go back to science, science has shown that when people are positive about things, they, get, they do get better. They, they're healthier. It's a healthier way to live. People who are positive live longer. That's why the negativity of religion, is that part is not good. But, uh, and I think the study of prayer has been, yes, prayer works. If the person being prayed for knows that he's being prayed for because he feels the love. Yeah, it's like a sugar, sugar pill that a doctor would give in the past. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That belief that this will yeah. work. The, the placebo effect, is that it? The placebo effect. It's I a measurable. I confuse it with placebo, placebo, which in Russian means thank you. Oh. Placebo. When I yeah, the placebo Moscow. effect is... Uh, that's, placebo. Mm -hmm. you, you know that, how they study uh, drugs. They'll give people, it's a blind study, double blind study. One person right. will be getting a, something that doesn't do anything. Another will be getting the actual drug. And the doctor, the double blind, the doctor doesn't know which ones are which either. So they can't convey unconsciously to this person. Yeah. And so a drug, it can be anywhere from 10 to 20 percent where the placebo people will get better or their pain will get better as well. So the drug has to actually do better than the placebo to know that it's the actual drug mm -hmm. and not, like you said, the, the power of the suggestion. So, but right. it's an actual effect. I think one of the things that Sam Harris is, has been studying is this need for people to be religious, right? Yeah. Um, uh, he's, he, I think he feels there's something in human nature that wants, that we want to have this feeling of awe. And, and, and gratitude is a, is a great feeling. To be grateful is a great thing. But to be grateful to a a boogeyman, it, it, I don't think is necessary in order to be grateful. I'm very grateful. Um, Paul Tillich, the, the uh, leader at Riverside Church in New York, I think is where he came from. The, wasn't that the power of positive thinking? I think, anyway, I think it was Paul Tillich who said, religion is wanting to have that feeling of awe, to be able to call upon that whenever you wanted to, to recreate that feeling of awe. It's a great feeling. Oh man, there's something more here that I can't see. That's great. It's an awesome feeling. But think of the of the damage this this can do. Think of the people this has killed in the name of this uh, boogeyman. 
Well, uh, in all honesty, <laughs> in all honesty, uh, it's only been in the last two years that I've really stated publicly this. Uh, I've been I've been hiding for 50 years in show business. I did Christmas. I had three Christmas specials. We can't do a Christmas special without some reference to Mary and Joseph and the baby and the, you know. And uh, yeah. Do you think if you had told them that you were an atheist, uh, they wouldn't have hired you for that job? I think I wouldn't have gotten the job. Of course, I wouldn't have. Yeah. So I played the game, you know. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not proud of that. I, but 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 a lot of things are changing now in in this century that that we that we wouldn't have done fifty. You know, a lot of things. As I talked about being attracted to members of my own sex, to realizing that that attraction is a normal thing, um, and and uh, the openness about religion, and uh, I think we've all grown, we've all evolved. I was supposed to sing "Take Me Out to the Ball Game" at a Kansas City Royals game because I was performing in Kansas City, and they said, "Well, now to promote your appearance here in Kansas City in this play." We want you to come down and, and sing at the seventh inning break. We sing, take me out to the ball game. Great. And we'll say, here's John Davidson from the local play. Great. It's a promotional thing. About three days before I was supposed to sing, they say, we've changed our mind. We want you to sing God Bless America at the seventh inning stretch. And I said to my wife, I, I just don't want to stand up and sing about something that I don't believe. I don't want to say, I don't want to do that. But instead of saying that to them, I said, you know, I, I, um, I got a rehearsal at the theater. It's come up at the last minute. I, I can't, I, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to cancel. And I was silent. And, and I said, I'm sorry. Well, I, I'm sorry I didn't speak out. I wonder what would have happened. We'll never know now, but I wonder what would have happened if I would walked out on that Kansas City Royals field and sung a cappella these words. I love America, land that I love. I'll stand beside her and guide her through the night with the stars from above. From the mountains, from the prairies, to the oceans white with foam. I, I love America. It's my home, sweet home. I love America, my home, sweet home. I wish I'd done it that way. Dead silence in the stadium. I don't know. They might have booed. I don't know. But I wish I'd done it. I'm a big fan of a folk singing, what is Roy Zimmerman, a folk singer, troubadour, he's a, I love Roy Zimmerman. On my way in here tonight, I bruise my nose, hugging a tree. I was late, because I stopped off at the Washington DC jail, to set a criminal free. And I ran out of seven grain bee pollen, macrobiotic, organic, sustainable marijuana for my jerky knees. Do you know how hard it is to be liberal? Well, do you? I had to learn to speak French, Spanish, Hindi, and Dolphin just so I could relate. I'm exhausted from taxing and spending and controlling the media and controlling Cambridge, Massachusetts as a separatist nation state. And at yoga today, I got bent out of shape because the guy doing bowl pulling pose next to me was intolerant, which I hate. 
hard it is to be liberal. Well, do ya? I had to uh, constantly, oh, I forgot, I'm still learning my form. Constantly feeding the hungry and bleeding my heart out, exceeding my budget and needing approval and reading the Huffington Post and leading a sing-along. Everybody! I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I sing at seven gay weddings each week. I'm running out of Barbra Streisand songs. Nothing else fits the bill. And I saved an endangered snail darter from being eaten by an endangered spotted owl, from being eaten by an endangered snow leopard, who I saved from being shot by a poacher, who I had to kill with kindness. It took a while And I hit a speed bump And spilled my chai latte All over the hemp covered seats of my Prius And the speed bump turned out to be a homeless Native American So I apologized and gave him some land Stomped out his cigarette, took away his gun Shot myself in the nuts on my way to my frivolous lawsuit Where I was suing myself cause I masturbated Against my will, do you know how hard it is to be a liberal, to be a knee-jerk liberal, what I wouldn't give, to be a circle-jerk conservative.